Uh, hey Curious Kids, Kevin here. Today on A Place Called Space, we are going to learn about Mars Rovers. Got my Mars poster over here, Mars Rovers. Got my inflatable Mars right here. Got a special NASA JPL Mars Rover t-shirt, all mars out. So we're gonna talk about the landers, the rovers, how many have there been, what are they looking for, how far did they go? So, what is a rover to start off with? Because we've landed on the moon, right, with humans and stuff. So, this, this is a lander. It's my Lego lander, my lunar lander. So notice it's got its four legs, right? Well, that's just the thing. With landers, they just land. They land on the surface, they come down, land on the surface of the moon, and then they don't rove around or like move like a car. They stay in one place, and the only things that might move are like things on the spacecraft. Maybe an arm comes out to dig or to scoop or something like that. But landers just stay in place. So with rovers, they have wheels, so they can move around. So we'll put the lander back. Rovers got wheels and they, they rove around, and we have sent four so far to the surface of Mars. Now the only other place that we have sent a rover, so something with wheels to move around with, has been on the moon. So we sent rovers to the moon, they can drive around, people drive them, so we have the moon buggies we learned about in the moon landing video, where cars, people, you know, like with the steering wheel, driving around on the surface of Mars, the moon, we've done that with people. And then we've sent robotic explorers, so robots that have wheels to drive around on the surface of Mars. So we're going to talk about each one of them, learn how big they are, when did we launch them, what did they do. So the first one, I've got something here that is the same size as the first rover we sent to Mars. How big do you think it is? You think it's going to be like as big as our sun? Is it going to be as big as Jupiter? As big as the sun? How big? Hmm. All right. I don't know if I'm back yet or not the power went out so i am sorry the computer had to reload all everything just turned off in my my apartment here so that was kind of weird let's see i think i'm back going yeah looks like i'm back going so sorry about that there's going to be a little interruption here in the video but it looks like i can just jump back up in it so cool all right we're where were we where were we power went out things got dark which happened to some of the mars rovers because they're not working anymore but i'll tell you which ones Talk about Mars and the rovers. Now, I said I had something down here that's the size of the first Mars rover. Okay, so we're back. Yes, I see the comments, thank you. It's this right here. I had to unplug it. This happened before the power went out, so I, I didn't do it. You all have one of these too. Don't unplug them and pick them up, but this is it. It's a microwave. Did, did you think I was going to pick up a microwave here? So the first Mars rover was the size of a microwave. This right here. So look in your kitchen. Go over there. Take a look. That's the size of the first Mars rover. It's not too big, but it gets kind of heavy. So I'm going to put it back down. That was the first Mars rover. and We're going to learn about it. So I got to do the changey of the things to show you what's going on. So we got this, comes up here. Oh, you get to see all the craziness that's going on behind my computer screen here. Give me one second. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna make it like this so that we can see the Mars rover stuff. So here it is, Mars rovers. Let's take a look, see if this comes up. If you can go full, it's looking good for me. Just need to make sure that it's coming through on the live stream pretty well, and we can still see me. Let's see. Mars Rovers by Kevin Jadabrun. So that's me, Kevin Jadabrun. There we go, looking good. All right, so here it is, Mars Pathfinder. It was the name of the program, and the rover's name was Sojourner. So that rover you see right there is the size of this, size of the microwave. So when did we do that? So Sojourner went to Mars, we launched it 
1996 in December, and then it landed in 1997. So the rover was named Sojourner, and then it also had these things with it. Well, these are a bunch of people, they didn't, they didn't go with it, right? See all the things that look like flower petals? One's up in the back and there's two down in front. So the flower petals and then the thing in the middle, that white thing that says JPL has the American flag, that is the Cargan, Cargan, sorry, Carl Sagan Memorial Station. So Carl Sagan was the like one of the first people and the most popular one to talk about outer space. So if you've heard of Cosmos, Neil deGrasse Tyson is the host of that now. The first one ever was by Carl Sagan. He was a professor at Cornell University and did tons of science and research stuff with NASA and told so many people about it. So we call it the Carl Sagan Memorial Station. And that was like a little antenna there that we the rover would send its information to. And then once it got it, it would send it back home to Earth. But you can see all those people sitting around. So the rover's on the front part of that pedal there. We call them pedals, the solar panels. And you see it's about the size of a microwave. Now, how did we actually land that on the surface of Mars? How did we land it there? I got a video and it's super cool, super cool. So let me do the video. Oh, the video's next, hold on. I forgot, I put it in here. Let's see if it plays. Okay, so here's Mars, right? We did 20 years of exploration there. The first one shows us, here it is, Mars Pathfinder. So it's flying through space, it's going in. So one of those big things, now it's bouncing. So those are airbags and then it dropped it. People are happy, right? Yeah, because it's bouncing around. I've worked with some of them. And then this is on the surface of Mars. So this is actual picture. So there's the rover, it's going down and it's on the surface of Mars right there. Look at that. Now, we're gonna go to the surface of Mars. You ready? Here we go. We're on the surface of Mars. This link is in the description below. So you can go here too. It's on YouTube, it's from NASA. And what you can do is you can click and move around. Look, so here's Sojourner. Here's the rock it was expecting. They named the rock Yogi, All right? We look down, we see Pathfinder. We see the Carl Sagan Memorial Station. This is what we saw inside of the, the clean room, all the people that were in those white costumes. These are the solar panels. And you can just look around on Mars as if you were this rover. I think that's like one of the coolest things ever. It's like we're on Mars. You can even look up. Can't really see much though, right? Because it's daytime, you can't see stars. It's dusty, but there's rocks. And so that's the, the Mars rover. And you can see it's, it's tire tracks. That's pretty cool. Where it went down this little ramp here and then it drove over there. So the first way that we landed first Mars rover was with airbags and then they just bounced. It was a big bouncy ball, boing, 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 on the surface of Mars here. And then you can see them down below. So you see all the, the things that look like, like maybe a blanket that's kind of around the bottom. So once we stopped, we let all of the air out of those airbags, just and then it opened up and then the rover drove down. And that's what we see right here. So cool. So what it was doing it was studying rocks. So you see how it's looking at this rock. It was also looking at the soil that was down below too. And it really wanted to learn like, if we're gonna send a rover to Mars, like what do we need to know? What's it gonna be like? How much is it gonna cost? So this was like the first one trying to figure it out for like a low cost. Space is expensive, right? He wants me to keep going. So we needed to figure out what was the next cost, the next rover. The next rover is Spirit, Spirit and Opportunity. So there's one picture there, why are there two names? We built two of them. So there's two rovers, one is named Spirit and one is named Opportunity, and they both look exactly like this. This is a rendering, so an artist created this in a computer. This is exactly what it looks like on the surface of Mars. Now, how big is this one? It's bigger than the microwave. I'm gonna bring that up one more. It's bigger than the microwave, but it's too big for me to like pick it up or put something in my 
little studio office here to show you how big it is. So we're gonna picture. The next one shows you how big it is. It's the size of a golf cart, right? So there's a person in there driving around. No one's on Mars driving this thing, but that's how big it is. It's about the size of a golf cart, and there's two of them that we're driving around on Mars. So I'm gonna jump back really quick here. So, Sojourner. How long did Sojourner last? Because we send it there, is it still going? It's not. So it's on the surface of Mars, it's kind of covered up by a bunch of dust, because it's not working anymore. When we sent it there, we wanted it to work for about a week, but it ended up working for 85 days. It's almost three months. So it worked so much longer than what we designed it for, so we got to learn a lot more stuff about Mars. Now, these next ones, Spirit and Opportunity, they also lasted a really long time. So we designed them to last for 90 days, so a little bit longer than what Sojourner actually did, but they lasted so much longer. So we launched these in 2004, or they landed in 2004, and then they were on the surface for years. But before I tell you how long they were on the surface, we're gonna watch another video that tells us how they got down on the surface. So we had airbags with Sojourner, right? Well, we needed to add a little bit more to slow it down because these were bigger and heavier. How do we do that? We did it like this. So here's the launch. But what I want to show you is coming up here. Right there. Okay, so we got the parachute. Parachute comes up to help slow us down. So as we're entering Mars atmosphere, we got the parachute and we're slowing down. And eventually we throw away part of the spacecraft that we call the heat shield that helps us slow away. So that goes away and now it comes down on a rope. So there's that, we saw that same pedal stuff, right? The little things that fold up. So it's falling down like that. And then soon we're slowing down. Then we take a look at it and poof, there we go. There's our airbags, the big balls again. But now this part's different. You see all that stuff spraying down? So those are rockets that are shooting to slow it down, and then we start bouncing. And we're bouncing again. So here's a longer, slower video of what it looked like with those airbags just bouncing on Mars. Look, like, look how far it's going. It just keeps on going. So the engineers are sitting there like, What's, is, it, is it gonna survive? Because that's like, right? It's going all over the place. Is it gonna be safe? So it's like, it's rolling okay. It's about to come to a stop. So we're waiting for information that the spacecraft above is looking down and sending from inside, back all the way to Earth, long ways away, to tell us if it's okay. So the engineers are kind of freaking out a little bit. But then eventually they say it's okay. So there's our airbags going down and getting smaller, right? Now they're all gone, so the pedals. The spacecraft opens up, so it's the same way as we saw Sojourner, the microwave one. So now it's opening up, and now we got Spirit and Opportunity. They're all kind of folded up too, because you're going to Mars, and it's a long journey, and you want to be small. So then they start opening up and stretch out their solar panels, like that. See? Nice and slow coming out there. And then its wheels got to come open too, once those solar panels are doubly unfolded. Kind of like origami. Have you ever done that? That's where you take paper and you fold it up and you can make like a little bird or something. I'm not that good at it. I, I can't do that. But I know how to fold a spacecraft. Now this part. So this, so that's the camera mast. So up on top, there's two little eyes or cameras that allow us to look around and take pictures. See, here they are. See the different science instruments up on top there. Super cool. That's how we get our awesome images of Mars. All right. Now, back into here for us to learn not about the man in the golf cart, but how far did Spirit and Opportunity go? So hopefully this is big enough that you can see it. But Spirit went for six years. So we only, did, only designed them for 90 days or three months. And it lasted a whole six years. And in that time, it traveled almost five miles. 4.8 miles, it says there to be exact five miles. And then when it says they are like a 30 degree slope, what is that? Well, this is zero degrees, right? If you're running, 
it's easier to run here, but if you have to run up a hill, you ever try that? You gotta run up a hill maybe for sports practice? It's a lot harder. So it went up a 30 degree slope. So 30 degrees is just how steep is it? So you're zero, here's 45, here's 90. So for right here, it's about there. It climbed a hill about that big. Now what happened? It only lasted for six years and now it's just on the surface of Mars, not working anymore. It got stuck. It got stuck in a sand trap. So there's like sand all over the place. It got stuck. It couldn't move anymore. And then dust, so there's dust like the wind on Mars, picks up a lot of dust because it's dry. And then it put the dust on those solar panels because that's how it gets its energy. If the sun comes, touches those solar panels, like this little spacecraft here, same thing that we have on the International Space Station, right? That's how we get our power, is those solar panels. Well, the dust came and went on the solar panels and covered them up. And then there wasn't any more energy for the spacecraft spirit, the rover, so it stopped working. Now, opportunity. So we see the numbers up here on the other side, because spirit and opportunity, they're the exact same spacecraft design. We just built two of them. And it lasted for 14 years. It's a teenager over 14 years on Mars. So we launched them in 2004, and it was just recently, so not too long ago, just last year, that Mars, uh, it's kind of sad, Mars opportunity stopped working. For 14 years, it was driving around on the surface of Mars, giving us a bunch of information. In that time, it traveled 28 miles. Now, do you know how long a marathon is? A marathon is 26.2 miles. It drove further than a marathon. That's so far. So it did a great job. And then for the degrees we see on the bottom, how much did it go? Just a little bit more than Spirit. But they're climbing hills. We got so much awesome information from Spirit and Opportunity. What they were looking for was, was there water? Water, and we have here, everyone take a drink of your water. Remember, stay hydrated, it's healthy. Was there water on Mars? Water on Mars in the past. Because we don't see any lakes. We saw that there was frozen water here or there, but was there like liquid water? Was there lakes, rivers, maybe oceans? Was there past water on Mars? So what we learned from Spirit and Opportunity that way back when, billions of years ago, Mars was maybe Earth-like. Super cool that it must have been kind of like what we see here on Earth way in the past. All right, we got, we got two more rovers to go through. Two more. Kevin, I thought you said there were only four because we're sending another one this year. So next up, Mars Curiosity. So that is this one right here. The one on my t-shirt right there. And this one we launched in 2011 and it landed in 2012. It's been on the surface for a while, eight years. And it's a big one. It's as big as a car tiny car but like car where you can fit two to four people in it that one's on mars still roving around it's still working it's working well you can see that there's a bunch of dust on it see it's really dusty on mars this one it doesn't have those solar panels it has a nuclear reactor it's called an rtd rtg radioisotope thermonuclear generator big words don't need to know it it's like a nuclear reactor and that's how it gets a power to drive around on Mars. And it hasn't been on Mars as long as Opportunity was, driving around for 14 years. So it's only gone 12 and a half miles. So it's almost at a half marathon. We're getting there. Next up, well, before we go next up, let's take a look at these three. And then I'm gonna show you how we landed Curiosity on Mars. So we got Sojourner there. I got my Sojourner right here, the size of the microwave. And then you see Spirit and Opportunity. That's the size of the golf cart. And then Curiosity, it's the big one, like the size of a small car. And to land at that big of a thing on the surface of Mars, we had to get really creative, really creative. So I'm gonna show you how we did that. Oh, excuse me. All right, that one comes over here. This is how we did it. So from right here. Okay, so we're coming into the surface of Mars. 
or the atmosphere of Mars, and it's going to get really hot. So we're shooting all these little things just to make sure we're going the right way. And then that's a bunch of heat. So we got a big metal shield. We got a big metal shield to protect us from all of that heat that's coming in when we go into the surface of Mars. So it gets really hot. We want to protect ourselves from all of that heat. So we keep on going, and that's where we slow down mostly. But soon, we're able to throw that part away, and we get our parachutes to come up, like we saw before. So we keep on cruising to the surface of Mars, and then boom, we throw out our parachutes to help slow us down. Like people who jump out of airplanes, I've done that, use a parachute to slow you down to get to Earth. So once it slows down enough, it shoots out, just like poof. Almost like a bullet out of a gun because it's going super fast. But you can see it's all curled up in there. And then now we launch more rockets. So we're hovering on rockets. So we're just lowering ourselves down like a powered descent is what we call it. So rockets to make us really slow. And then we use a rope. We take a rope to slowly put our rover all the way down to the surface. So we're going to see that in just a second because we've got to take some time to get all the way close enough to the surface so we don't need that long of a rope. So these pictures are actually from the spacecraft. This is what it was seeing as it was going down. It's like, okay, where should I land? Where's a good spot? Here's a good spot. So we start lowering it down so you can see all of the ropes that are going down with it. It's like, okay, it's a lot of work. We've got the heat shield, the parachutes, the hovering. So this is called sky crane. This is a crane that's hovering in the sky on rockets to lower our rover, Mars Curiosity, down on the surface. Now, once we touch down on the surface, it cuts the cord and then it flies away because you don't want it to crash into the rover that we just spent all of that time and work to put on the surface. So it flies away and it crashes. And then we've got Curiosity on the surface of Mars. And now it needs to wake up because it's been, it's been sleeping, you know, sleeping on its journey. So its head, just like we saw before, needs to come up, right? And then we got the two cameras that are looking around. There it is. The two cameras that are looking around. And that's how we get the really cool Mars selfies. So what we just saw before was a picture of Mars and it looked like he was doing a selfie, right? Because you couldn't see anything. Well, that camera takes the arm, takes a bunch of pictures, and then we put them all together to make a Mars Curiosity selfie. And it's going around, and what is it looking for? Signs of past life on Mars. It's looking for past life on Mars. Well, not past life, like, was it possible for there to be life? Like, was it possible to have the conditions? So yesterday we talked about Europa, where we need water, chemistry, and energy. Those are the ingredients to have life. Did Mars have all of that in the past? So it's drilling into rocks to try and figure out what they're made out of. Were there traces of water before? Did it have the right conditions for aliens, for life to be there? So it takes some of that rock, it puts it inside of its, its belly, because that's the big thing we got there, using lasers and instruments and microscopes to look at those little pieces of rock to see, hey, was there possibilities of aliens in the past? Did it have the right type of stuff? inside of the dirt. You can see there's a bunch of real laser things that we shoot all over to take a look at and try and pull apart all the different things inside of these little just pieces of soil. We call Mars soil regolith. So the regolith is the word for the Mars dirt. And we put it inside of our belly and we take a look at it. Pretty neat, huh? We're learning some cool things. Now, almost done. We're getting there. We got one more rover to talk about. NASA Perseverance, NASA. Mars Perseverance is the latest rover. We call it Percy for short, and it's launching this year. It is launching in July of 2020, and it's gonna land in February of 2021. It's gonna take a long time to get there, and it's about the same size as Curiosity. It looks a lot like it, doesn't it? So it's a little bit heavier. We're still gonna land it with that crane that hovers on rockets, and then what is it doing? Why is it there? So this one is actually searching for the signs of past life. So we're like, okay, Mars did have water in the past. It was habitable 
So that means there could have been life. Let's see if we can find any signs, like indicators or markers or information that tells us that there were aliens there in the past. That would be so cool. The second thing that it's doing is it's getting a bunch of samples of Mars. What do you mean by samples of Mars? Well, it's like taking a shovel or a drill, scooping up some Mars, putting it in a little canister, putting it in a little, little canister, and then setting it on the surface for a future mission to come over to Mars, pick it up, and then bring it all the way back to Earth. We call it a sample return to bring some of Mars all the way back to Earth to study it here. Because we've never done that. Whenever we send things to Mars, they just stay there. We have never brought anything back home from Mars to Earth. But we've done that with the moon, so now we gotta go on and do that to Mars. Okay, lots of information. Last thing, coolest thing, as part of the Mars Perseverance rover, it's bringing along a friend. It's bringing along this friend. Let's check this out right here. So we got the Mars helicopter. Yeah, you saw that right, it said Mars helicopter. There's a helicopter going to Mars, there it is, with Mars Perseverance. So it's got some blades, it's gonna spin. Its name is Scout, because it's gonna scout the path forward for the rover. It's gonna take a look at what is in front of it, what's to the side, where should it go and investigate? What's the best place on Mars for it to drive to? So we got a helicopter, it's gonna go out, search around, send stuff back to the rover, just like this, send it, send it, send it, and be like, yo, this is the cool stuff that we found. Come over here and check it out. Now this is what it is actually like at NASA. So there's testing it, right? Here we go. It's flying. So this is in a chamber to make it kind of be like Mars. Is it gonna fly? Because the air at Mars is less than the air at Earth. It's thinner. So if you're flying in the air, you need to make sure you can still fly because Earth and Mars, they're different. So we got the Mars Helicopter Scout going with the Mars Rover, Perseverance. They're launching this year. I'm so excited for it. So excited for what's happening. We learned so much about Mars Rovers today. We've got Sojourner, who's the size of a microwave. We've got Spirit and Opportunity that were the size of golf carts. Then we had Curiosity, this one here that was the size of a small car. All that were roving around on Mars. Curiosity is the only one that's still going. And then we got NASA Perseverance that is launching this year to go to the surface of Mars, see if there's signs of past life and get ready to bring some stuff back home so we can take a look at it with a potential future mission. If you like this video, please click that thumbs up. Thumbs up tells me you liked it and I was doing a good job. And if you haven't done this yet, click subscribe. It's down right beneath the video. It's in red and white. It says subscribe. Click that. It lets me know that you're a fan of a place called space and you're gonna come back and watch some future videos. I'm gonna check out if we got any questions before we get out of here. Let's see, there's a lot going on here. A microwave with wheels, yeah. Are there rovers on Mars from other countries? The United States and NASA is the only one to successfully land a rover on Mars. And interestingly enough, so far, it's the only country to successfully land anything on Mars. Because we talked about landers, right? The things without wheels. So no one has done it successfully. The European Space Agency almost did it, but they crashed a few years ago. While I was working at NASA, they crashed there. And we were like, no but no other country has done that yet. Let's see. Ah, Wes says, you know, or yeah, you know planets orbit suns and moons orbit planets. Does anything orbit moons? No, not yet. Sometimes moons will orbit each other. So if I got like two moons, potentially they could orbit each other as they go around a planet. So we could have a moon's moon if you want to consider it that, but we don't really see any things orbiting moons because when a moon is around a planet the planet's gravity is stronger so eventually it would steal the moon's moon and make it its own moon then it would have two moons good question wes great priya what is the biggest rover on mars that would be curiosity 
This one right here on my back. Great questions. How fast do they go? Very slow. Very slow. Like a couple of centimeters at a time because we're so far away. Mars is so far away from Earth that it takes time. The soonest, it's between like four to eight minutes where you send a signal from Earth to Mars. It takes like four to eight minutes to get there. So if you're driving a car, right, and you need to wait eight minutes until someone tells you to stop or turn left or turn right, that's why we go very slow, take a stop, send some information back. They can go faster, but we, we don't do that. How long did it take to build a Curiosity? Years. So the actual build process, I think, was somewhere between three to four years, approximately. Because we design it on computers, right? Like what you're watching this on, it could be a phone or a tablet or computer. So it takes years to design it on the computer first. Like three to five years to do that. And then like two to five years to build it. So they take a really long time to actually design, build, and put it all together. And then we have to test it. We gotta test it out afterwards to make sure it's good. If something breaks, we gotta go back and figure out what went wrong. Okay, awesome, great questions. Again, click that thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you click subscribe, and as always, keep looking up.